everyone. Welcome back to Law and Crime. We switch gears now and head to New Jersey for the trial against defendant Christopher Gregor, who is accused of abusing his six-year-old son. Corey Michelot uh, to death after gaining shared custody. Now, Gregor was not present in his son's life until Corey was four years old. Now, just to refresh your memory on this trial, Corey was taken to the hospital by the defendant on April 2nd of 2021. And after waking up from a nap and experiencing nausea, shortness of breath, and slurring of his words during the CAT scan, the victim suffered seizures and ultimately died. Now, the state has not rested and witnesses are being called out of order. The defense called their second uh, witness officer, Daniel Dugan, to the stand. Now, Dugan addressed a March 28, 2021 wellness check. So let's listen to the direct by defense there, followed by the cross state. And when you met with him, did you make any observations of Corey? Yes. Okay. And what observations did you make of Corey? Saw um, some bruises to his legs, arms, and hips. I also saw a minor laceration to uh, above his, one of his eyebrows. I forget what eyebrow exactly. Um, while they were in the stairway leading up to the apartment. Besides, when you go to testify to you observed on Corey. Did you observe anything suspicious? Um, not between Mr. Greger and Corey. Um, they seem to have a good relationship between each other. Um, and that, that was that. We spoke with both of them. And that was really it. Okay, and then you left. Yeah. So on March 28th of 2021, you were dispatched to the Barnegat uh, Police Headquarters, correct? Yes. And... Mm -hmm. That would have been at approximately 7.57 p.m.? Uh, I don't recall exactly, but yeah. And when you got there, you spoke to a Brianna Michelot, correct? Yes. And Brianna is the mother of Corey Michelot? Yes. And Brianna had made a complaint regarding bruises on her son? Yes. And based upon your conversation with Brianna, you went to 900 Barnegat Boulevard, correct? Yes. And that was an apartment at the Atlantic Heights Complex in Barnegat, correct? Yes. And Patrolman Roman, he also went with you to that apartment, correct? Yes. And when you went to the apartment, you were there to conduct a child welfare check? Yes. And the purpose of a child welfare check is to make sure that a child isn't in immediate danger, correct? Yes. And in essence, the purpose is, is to, to lay eyes on that child to make sure that they're not in imminent harm, correct? Yes. And you got to the apartment and you met with Christopher Greiger, right? Yes. And you asked to see Corey? Yes. And. You saw Corey, and you saw that he had a bruise on his legs, correct? Yes. And you saw that Corey had bruises on his arms? Yes. You saw that Corey had a bruise on his hip? Yes. You saw that Corey had a bruise on his chest? Yes. You also saw that Corey had a laceration to, I'm sorry, above his eyebrow, right? Yes. And you spoke to Christopher Greger at the apartment? Yes. And you also spoke to Corey, right? Yes. And when you spoke to Corey, you spoke to him in the presence of his father, correct? Yes. And you didn't separate Corey from his father when you talked to the defendant, correct? No. And based upon your immediate observations, Corey did not appear to be in distress at that moment, except for your observations of the bruises, correct? Correct. And you had no idea when you were at that apartment, that there had been this video um, with the defendant interacting with his son on a treadmill, correct? Correct. And you have no idea how Corey actually got those bruises, correct? Uh, Corey told me that, you know, I, Without saying what Corey said, it was just a, right. You had no idea. You have no personal knowledge as to how Corey got those bruises, correct? All right. Now I want us to listen to the redirect and the recross. You went there to do a welfare check based upon what Brianna Micholo had reported. Yes. And when you went there, you met with Corey and you met with his father. Am I right? Yes. And what is a welfare check? Just to make sure that the child or if 
any welfare check to make sure that that person's not in immediate danger, you know, uh, self-harm, anything like that, just make sure that they're okay. Okay. Now, Ms. Lento asked you if you were aware of a treadmill video, am I correct? Correct. But you were aware of a treadmill when you spoke to them, weren't you? After he told me about it, correct. Okay. After you met with Corey and his father and you did their welfare check, mm -hmm. did you, as an officer, make a decision? Yes. Okay. And the decision you made during the welfare check was that there was nothing suspicious, as you just testified, right? Yes. And that there was actually a good relationship between the father, Christopher, and his son, right? Yes. Okay. And you took no further action, am I right? I mean, we call it Child Protective Services. But you had to because it was a welfare check of a child. Correct, yeah. Okay. When we saw the bruises, we wanted to okay. obviously make sure that everything so is okay. So you need to, as an officer, you needed to report that you had this interaction with these two people, right? Yes. And after that interaction, you found nothing suspicious and a good relationship between a father and a son, right? Yes. What made you think to yourself as you were sitting there talking to the two of them that they had a good relationship? I uh, said so he, you know, the child rides his bike, they play football together, um, Trollman Roman, so that he's observed them uh, playing football. Um, hold on, hold on. He may be called. Roman statements are hearsay right now. Gotcha. Um, but, yeah, just nothing seemed suspicious while we were on scene there. So you wrote a report in this matter, didn't you? Yes. And in your report, I believe that you used the words appeared to have a good relationship, correct? Correct. And you used the word appeared to have a good relationship because you didn't know the extent of the relationship between Corey and his father, correct? Correct. And you hadn't been in that apartment for more than, what, a few minutes when you used the term appeared to have a relationship? Correct. And you didn't know what would have been happening in the apartment when you weren't there, correct? Correct. And you wouldn't have known what would have been happening in the apartment behind closed doors when you were not at the apartment, correct? Correct. Bring in our legal panel this hour. Still with me is civil trial attorney David Ring. And coming on with us now is criminal defense attorney and civil rights attorney as well, Tyler Bailey. Tyler, I'm going to start with you here. The officer called in the referral to Child and Protective Services, DCPNP. What conclusion do you make out of that? Well, so here you have the defense calling the officer as a witness. So what they're trying to show is that the officer showed up and in his report did not find the child was in imminent danger. It could be a convincing uh, witness for the defense with a law enforcement officer essentially giving some evidence that the child was not in imminent danger. Uh, the prosecution is trying to turn that to say that he was doing a wellness check, that he had no context of the relationship between father and son. And so therefore his testimony cannot firmly establish that the child was not in danger. I think it's a good witness for the defense, uh, but still uh, with the facts of this case, I'm not sure how it's gonna work. David, what other actions could this officer uh, have done? I mean, could he have just taken the kid into custody if he thought it was that bad? Well, look, here, here's what concerns me is that kids who are being abused, they're never going to disclose the abuse if their parent, the one abusing them, is in the room with them. And so the best practice is to have separated Corey from his dad and to try to establish a rapport with Corey alone with the officer, and he might have gotten some, some information out of Corey. Uh, just the bruises, bruises all over the body and the laceration, that's a red flag right there. He should have figured out exactly what the story was, how this young kid got these bruises all over his body. Well, it's interesting because uh, state by uh, defense here plays devil advocate of not knowing what goes behind closed doors here. Tyler, what do you make of that? Well, that's exactly what the uh, state was trying to do, say that they, this officer really had no knowledge about what was really going on between father and son. Um, I'm not sure how experienced this officer is, but you know, as uh, my colleague just said, a laceration, bruises, those are clear visible signs that the child was being harmed. Uh, it would have been appropriate for a uh, call to be made for a forensic interview to come in at that point. Uh, someone who has expertise to, to talk to a child and see those cues and signs that a child is being abused. But the state say, look, you don't know because you were just there that day. You don't know 
what happens between father and son at the house when they're not around. David, as this trial continues, is it a good idea for Christopher Greger to take the stand? I would be very, very surprised if the defendant, Greger, took the stand, because as we all know, most criminal defendants are not going to take the stand. And in this case, there is a wealth of evidence the prosecution has against him that, that I, I think it would be doomsday for him to get up there and be cross-examined by the prosecution. I think he'd be, he'd be sealing his own fate in this case. David, I know you uh, mentioned the bruises before. Now, the defense questioned the bruises potentially coming from playing football. How likely is that? Well, look, here's the problem on these cases is that, sure, kids go outside, they play, they get hurt, they have bruises. And so that's why it's important to get a complete story, to separate the child, to ask him, how did you get these bruises? How did you get the laceration over your eye? And if you start hearing some inconsistent responses, because then you're going to ask the, the parent, well, how did he get the bruises? If you start hearing two different stories, that's a red flag. That means investigate further. All right, gentlemen, great analysis there. We're going to take a quick break here on Long Crime, but when we come back, much more trial coverage is ahead. Stay with us.